My name is Dion Jordan, and on behalf of the National Society of Leadership and Success, I want to thank you for the opportunity to share with you a great leadership trait. In my opinion, this trait is like a superhuman skill. It's one of the things that we call upon when we need it most, and that's called mental toughness. Now, I'm sure you've heard of mental toughness before. A lot of people associate mental toughness with athletes and sporting events. So what exactly is mental toughness? Mental toughness is the ability to keep your mind and your thoughts at a laser-focused state in the midst of adversity, in the midst of doubt, and in the midst of any type of discouragement to reach your goal. And once again, this is a skill that we all have. We just don't always know how to manufacture it when we need it most. Imagine this. It's winter break, and you're going home to visit your family. You just got done with your finals, and you have a lot of things on your mind. You're wondering how you did on the finals. You're also excited about all the people you're going to see once you get back home. Well, while you're driving down the street, you realize there's smoke coming from a house down the road. You don't think too much about it because you have other things on your mind. But the closer you get, the more you realize the smoke is coming from your house. Now your mind is going everywhere. Why? Because you know that you have a little brother or sister inside the house. So what do you do? You race up to the curb, you run up to the fire chief, and you tell them, the kids, the kids, th did you get the kids? And the fire chief tells you, whoa, you need to calm down. Look at that house. That house there looks like it's about to fall apart. Me and my men, we're not going in there now. You need to sit down and calm yourself. You immediately tell the fire chief, listen, either you need to go in there and save the kids or I'm going to. And if the fire chief says no, what do you do? You go back to your car, you start it up and go right through the front door and grab your little brother or sister or at least you die trying. That, my friend, is an example of mental toughness. Now, you might not be able to relate to that exact story, but I'm sure that that gave you a good concept of exactly what mental toughness looks like and what that feels like. Think about it for a minute. When driving down the street, your mind was everywhere. But as soon as you realized it was your house on fire and also that your little brother or sister were inside the house, what happened? Your whole mind and all your thoughts came to one. All your emotions, all your being came to intention, and you were a force to reckon with. You were willing to go someplace where trained professionals weren't willing to go. Why? Because your mind was focused, and you had your reason why, and mental toughness kicked in. And once again, when it comes to mental toughness, this is something you can manufacture at will if you know how. What I would like to do is I'd like to share with you the pillars of mental toughness, exactly what it takes in order to go from a confused state or maybe even a confident state to a more exact mental toughness state. So what exactly are these pillars? One of them for sure is confidence. How to build up that confidence and belief in yourself that regardless of what the adversity might be, that you'll still succeed. The other one is motivation finding your reason why you're doing what you do. And most importantly, focus. How to be able to get rid of all the distraction that's around you and focus on that which is most important. It's called mental toughness, and I'm excited to share the concept with you.